Hey everyone, Anthony here, and today I'm smoking the San Cristobal Elegancia. Let's get into it. I distinctly remember the first time I lit up the original San Cristobal line. So that line was introduced in 2007 out of Nicaragua, out of the My Father factory. And I have to say, it's memorable for a lot of reasons. First and foremost, I smoked it first thing in the morning because I was unfamiliar with the line on an empty stomach. And the cigar was very rich and very strong. And I have to say, it kind of buckled me a little bit. The taste that I was getting from that cigar was phenomenal. But at that time, because I was so unfamiliar with the blend, it blindsided me and actually made me a little woozy. Now, I didn't put it down, I didn't stop smoking it, but my first initial reaction to that blend was, it's exquisite flavor, but man, is this a heady cigar, you know? And I, I think that the original San Cristobal line, you know, introduced in 2007, I always said it's a, it was a blend that was before its time. Because even though stronger cigars were becoming more prevalent in the marketplace back in 2007, it was a really bold, rich cigar that really pushed the boundaries of strength. And the Garcia family, who makes the San Cristobal out of the My Father factory, you know, their taste, they like bold, rich tobacco. And their blending style was much different from any other factory out there at the time. So, you know, when that blend hit, it was one of the first ones that I smoked from the My Father factory that really sat me down. But I understand their blending style. Um, but, you know, looking back on that, it was a phenomenal experience. And, and tell you what I did, I actually, because it kind of buckled me a little bit, the next time I went to smoke it, I remember I was like, I got to eat first. I got to get ready for the cigar because I enjoyed the flavor, but the strength was just too much at the time. So, had a meal. Next time I lit it up, definitely tolerated a little bit more. But because, again, it was a blend before its time, it was still strong compared to everything else I was smoking. So I had almost had to ease into it and almost get myself accustomed to the controlled aggression of that blend. And then some years later, here comes a totally different cigar under the same brand, right? San Cristobal Elegancia. So, you know, you're going from this really bold Nicaraguan blend and the original blend, and then you see the Elegancia. And of course, it speaks of approachability. You look at it and we smoke with our eyes and you say, well, it looks like a mild cigar. It definitely has that shade grown wrapper. Let's see what this cigar has. And I remember lighting my first one in the Elegancia. And the first thing that stood out to me was that it had really elegant flavors, you know, hence the name Elegancia. It had a lot of character. I tasted like notes of cashew, which I still get today. The leading note to me when I smoked the Elegancia is definitely a nuttiness. So some people say almond, cashew, but to me there's a distinct kind of cashew note to it. And the other thing that I thoroughly enjoyed about it, that kind of like took me back in a good way, was that it actually had a peppery quality to it. It really has like a white pepper note that sits alongside of the other tasting notes of a nuttiness, right? There's also like a coffee note to it. But when you know, you're smoking a cigar that's mild to medium body, which is the Elegancia, you want something that has character. As a matter of fact, you know, this is a cigar that I recommend all the time. I call it the perfect transition cigar. For people that are used to smoking a, a heavy dose of maybe milder Dominican tobaccos uh, or predominantly Dominican tobaccos that want to transition into Nicaragua but not jump into the deep end of the pool. They want to kind of ease into it. So Elegancia is a cigar that I always recommend to people as that transition cigar because it is the perfect balance of elegance and approachability but it also has a ton of character to it. You know, when you're talking about a white pepper note to it, you know it's not void of spice. It has spice, but it's very subdued. You know, it's, it's kind of a whisper of spice. But along with coffee notes, cashew flavor, um, you know, it, it makes for a wonderful blend. But I like the fact that it actually has that pepper quality to it. Yeah, I think a lot of people that have been smoking for a while, seasoned smokers, might avoid Elegancia because they look at it and obviously, you know, they smoke with their eyes and they say, I don't think this cigar is gonna have enough for me. And honestly, I, don't, I think you're actually selling yourself short if you do that because, you know, there's a time and place for everything. We talk about sometimes you want something that's gonna be mild and medium body but have a lot of flavor and a lot of character to it. So I think if you people avoid cigars just with a lighter wrapper, 
you can't judge a book by its cover when it comes to cigars. Because I think we, even I'm, I fall prey to that. I do it sometimes, like, I'll look at a cigar, look up and down a wrapper and be like, oh, you know, I'm really not feeling this kind of style right now. I want something a little bolder. And then I'll, I'll, I'll spark up a wrapper that's from Connecticut or from Ecuador, shade grown. And the cigar just has a ton of character to it. So if you're a seasoned smoker out there, or if you just started right out of the gate with bolder cigars, and you glance over this whole category, which Elegancy is in, I think you're selling yourself short because there's a world of flavor in it. It's just the, it, the way it hits your palate and the, the time of day that you choose to smoke it would be different, but you definitely want to challenge your palate because otherwise, how would you know what it tastes like? You know, when people talk about these elegant flavors, this finessed blend uh, with a lot of complexity, but also something that just sits at mild to medium body, there's a place for that to me in everyone's humidor, if you ask me. Yeah, speaking of elegant flavors, to me with the Elegancia, it definitely leads with a cashew note or almond note, nuttiness for sure, along with that white pepper. And, you know, I'm smoking the Churchill size, which is a perfect like, 7 by 50 traditional Churchill size, which I love. Um, you know, the cigars are already starting to develop. There's notes of coffee there, not like overly stated, like dark roast coffee, like a medium roast coffee. Uh, definitely that white pepper note, but they're all together in harmony at the same time, which is really makes for a wonderful kind of combination and a harmony of flavors because it's like really nice balance. You get a nuttiness that can come across as maybe a little sweetness, but the elegancy to me, I don't get a lot of sweetness from it, but that nuttiness kind of comes across as kind of like that round note, right? Then you get that white pepper note that kind of wakes your senses, right? Then you have that coffee note, which every, you know, everyone loves to taste the coffee, right? But how they work in harmony with this blend is, is really, it's, it's, it's a, a testament to the cigar maker, the My Father Factory, and of course the Ashton people who actually, you know, distribute the blend. Because, you know, I always say, when you're working on blends that are on one end of the spectrum or the other, whether it's a really full body blend that pushes the limits, or a cigar that's gonna be mild to medium body, it's hard to come up with something that has a ton of character and a ton of layers of flavor and complexity but also be very approachable. So there's, there's magic in blending a cigar like this because you want it to appeal to a wide audience. That's why I'm saying if you're a seasoned smoker or you only reach for dark cigars, you're selling yourself short. When they come up with blends like this, they want to appeal to everyone, right? And there's a time and place for every smoke. For me, the Elegancia, I can smoke this cigar any time of day, even as a seasoned smoker. I've actually smoked it after a meal and you would think maybe you got lost. It does not get lost. It has a ton of character, and that white pepper driving note that you get in there really stands up to a meal. So I could smoke this cigar any time of day. So, you know, I think to myself, if I'm going to invest in a box of cigars, say I'm going on vacation, I have to consider all the angles as far as who's going to be there with me. I'm going to be sharing cigars with friends. Maybe some of them are occasional smokers. Maybe some of them are seasoned smokers. To me, this cigar is a perfect cigar to buy by the box for an occasion like that because I can hand it to someone who smokes a couple cigars a year. It's still mild enough and approachable enough that they can enjoy it, but I can also hand it to my friends that are seasoned smokers and they won't be lost after us having dinner or something. But when you're gonna share with other people and you don't know exactly what their strength meter is, it's nice to have something that covers the canvas. And I think the Elegancia does that. As I said, as a seasoned smoker myself, I do enjoy it in the morning with a coffee, I really do. I could smoke it on the golf course. It doesn't get heady on me. It has a lot of flavor. It burns beautifully, right? But I could smoke this after a meal. But I've been around friends of mine that only smoke an occasional cigar. They might smoke one cigar a month. Hand it over to them, they smoke it, and they're like, man, this cigar is phenomenal. It's mild, but yet it's extremely flavorful. That's the goal, right? You want something that has character and, and you know, finesse. And speaking of finesse, Let's get into this pairing. So today for the pairing, we chose the Casa Noble and Nejo. You know, and I've had this pairing in the past. As a matter of fact, I remember being at the Ashton Cigar Bar in downtown Philly. I was just getting ready to fire up an Elegancia. And I went to the bartender and I said, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, a fine tequila that I want to pair up with this Elegancia. 
And I want something that's definitely gonna have round notes, but something that's gonna really bring out the flavor of the cigar I'm smoking. So bartender puts up Casanoble Nejo. He said, you ever had it? I said, no, I've never had it. And I definitely never had it with Elegancia. Let's say what happens. So this tequila is aged two years in French oak. Most Anejo tequila is only aged one year. So it picks up a lot of the barrel. So on the nose, what you get is definitely agave, which you should get. It's made from agave, right? Like cooked agave. Like Then you also get notes of vanilla and caramel are there and a little bit of oakiness, which makes sense. It spends two years in French oak barrels. And then on the palate, the agave kind of takes a little bit of a back seat to the vanilla notes and the caramel notes. But the beauty of this tequila is you might think by the flavor notes that I'm describing, it's overly sweet, which it's not. It has inherent natural sweetness to it because you're gonna grab those notes from the barrel, the vanilla notes from the barrel, right? But, and the caramel notes from the barrel. But it's not overly sweet whatsoever. But what it brings to the table in this pairing is a perfect complement to a cigar that has white pepper. Remember I told you one of the leading notes of the Elegancy, even though it's a mild and medium body cigar, is white pepper along with a nuttiness, like a cashew note, and also coffee. So think about how coffee complements caramel and vanilla, right? But not overly stated from a sweetness perspective. It's gonna pick up those notes from the barrel. It's gonna pick up those vanilla notes, those caramel notes but it's really balanced. And I love the fact that it gets out of the way of the cigar and the cigar kind of gets out of the way of the spirit. That's what you want. And you want like perfect balance. You know, the white pepper note in the Elegancia really contrasts the vanilla notes and the caramel notes and kind of the, even the oaky notes that I get from the tequila. And on the finish of the Casanoble, Anejo, I get chocolate, which is really interesting because you know you get vanilla up front and notes of vanilla on the nose, but on the back end, I'm getting notes of chocolate, which I'm not getting chocolatey taste from the cigar, which I've never have got from the cigar, but I do get notes of, of course, things that complement chocolate, like nuts, right? Also coffee, they complement chocolate. So the finish of that is very chocolatey and very smooth too. It's a, it's a very smooth, refined tequila, which, you know, and there's people out there that might be unfamiliar with sipping tequilas like this is, and you might've been scared off by maybe, you know, tequila you had as a young person and like of all that harsh tequila you've had in the past. I think that when you have a cigar that's mild to medium body, like this cigar with a, like a world of complexity, I think tequila is like the perfect spirit to kind of match with it. So if you're reluctant to actually drink some tequila, sipping tequila, and you said, listen, it's just not my thing. I'm more of a whiskey fan. I have some other pairing choices for you. If you're a bourbon fan, my number one choice would be Basil Hayden. Basil Hayden is definitely an approachable bourbon, but the note that I get from Basil Hayden is it has a peppery quality to it. The cigar has a white peppery quality, so they complement each other, but also they contrast each other because in that Basil Hayden, there's a lot of layers of flavor, just like the cigar. Also, Eagle Rare would be another great bourbon. Again, it is approachable as bourbon goes. I think it would complement the Elegancia really well. If you're a Scotch fan, Glenmorangie, the original, the 10 year old would be perfect. If you're a Sherry fan, the La Santa from Glenmorangie would be perfect. And if you're a rum fan, the Diplomatico Green Label, even there, you're gonna get notes of caramel and vanilla, but I like the Diplomatico rum because it's not overly sweet because you don't want something that's gonna dominate the cigar. So all those choices, I gave you something in all the different spirit worlds, except for maybe gin, which you know, I'm a big fan of certain gins for sure. They contrast a lot with cigars. I don't mess with them all the time, but what I gave you, you should be able to work with. But if you've never had a sipping tequila, I advise you to go out and try one, especially this Casanoble in Nejo. If you're gonna smoke a cigar like this Elegancia, you want something that has very nuanced flavors and complexity and layers, this Casanoble in Nejo would be a perfect complement to a cigar like this. So I wanna thank you for joining me. Hopefully you enjoyed the pairing, the video, but before we depart, make sure you hit that like button, you smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you here next time. Thank you.